Is it live yet? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome for tonight's I Am Possible conversation with Helen Lee. We are a bit late because there was some technical issues and as as you've seen on the art I posted, Helen is a style coach and I'm going to her in in a minute so i really hope you guys are having a good weekend and sorry it's about like 10 15 minutes late hello linda how are you doing <laughs> are you there hi hello i'm just trashing my bedroom <laughs> That happens. That happens. Right, how are you doing? Have you had a good day? I'm good, thank you. Sorry, Willie. Yes, good. I've been detoxing uh, my apartment. <laughs> All right, busy, busy. Yes, it's a little dark in here, but I live in an apartment with like tiny little windows. So mm -hmm. this is the best quality that could get. Otherwise, the lights look a little bit exposed. Um, but Hopefully you can see me okay. As long as you can yeah. hear me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Okay, Helen Lee, could you introduce yourself to our viewers? Because of I course, know you, um, but people uh -huh. might not. Yeah. Um. So I'm Helen Lee Whaley. Helen Lee is all one word, as people have asked me all my life. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm a style coach. Um. And I've been doing this for about three and a half year now. Um, I'm from Newcastle and I currently live in Durham with my fiancé Dave and I'm 32. Is that enough information? Oh, that's more than enough, including your age and everything. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just... <laughs> so you are style coach. Yes. What, what do you do? Because the style coach, there might be lots of different areas of styling. Like, what exactly do you do as a style coach? Um, a style coach compared to just being a personal stylist uh -huh. is about coaching somebody and drawing out their individual style and identity. Uh -huh. um, so, yes, there is a part of it that involves my analysis. So I will do a colour analysis. I'll do a body shape analysis, obviously, to help them figure out their worst and best colours and shapes and styles but in terms of the style coaching there's a huge element of it around people's perception of themselves and self-acceptance because mm -hmm. it's not just getting the information it's accepting it it's using it it's improving your confidence i draw out people's style personalities look at their lifestyle a lot of people have gone through a lot of change mm -hmm. uh, and their wardrobe hasn't adapted to that change like having children changing career moving to another climate um and there's a lot more mentally and in terms of mindset involved in it rather than just saying here wear these clothes wear this color uh -huh. um go and buy this it's there's a lot more to it so that's where the coaching element comes in a little bit more it's kind of a little bit more like self-help a bit uh -huh. If that makes sense. Yeah, 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 of course, definitely. So how important is it? How often do you recommend people to get coach, like style coaching? Is it supposed to be like regular thing? Um, or... so, mm -hmm. For some people, it's like a one-off investment. Mm -hmm. um, some people come back to me. Well, I mean, I've only been doing it three and a half years. So some people may come back to me in years to come. I, I think personally and through experience that people's style evolves and changes probably every three to five years but it doesn't necessarily mean all of a sudden you're a completely new color palette it mm -hmm. doesn't mean your body shape has changed there will just be elements of your style evolving mm -hmm. I think in terms of a style code in terms of your body shape and your colors um, sometimes people will only need it done once Mm -hmm. It's just understanding and learning your identity, um, the colours you were born with, the body shape, which is your bone structure. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's then, once you know that information, it's the style that evolves, 
how you dress, how you think about um, how you dress, how you shop, wardrobe detoxing. So there's always different things like that to evolve, but you are who you are. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, you only need to invest in it once. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That answers the question. Yeah, exactly. I remember watching, is it Trini and Susanna? They, they were yeah, quite I still long, love that. Long, yeah. long time ago. And uh, how different is your service than theirs? So is it a similar thing? or? It is quite similar as in... You're taking people out of their comfort zone. It's an outside mm -hmm. eye who is professionally trained to look at what will suit you. I would say the difference with the style coaching and my style code is it's not just about me taking somebody shopping and having an outside eye and saying, here you go, mm -hmm. try this. And yes, when everyone puts the outfits on, Trini and Susanna suggest they love, mm -hmm. But then afterwards, they then don't have the information to go and do that themselves. Mm -hmm. My service, what's different, is I am helping people figure out their style code. So the body shape, the colors, the mm -hmm. style, where should they shop, everything about it, mm -hmm. so that they don't need me there all the time or someone like Trini and Susanna to take them shopping, to inspire them, to put outfits together they have that information and they can take more control themselves and they can do it. So that's the difference about what I do. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I felt like people needed instead of you constantly feeling like you need a personal shopper. It's about having the information and being able to refer to it. Yeah. And so you basically, you, people have a session with you and you help them to identify their best color and maybe the style of the clothing and what goes with what type of advice and you just off they go and start doing their shopping yeah so it's about learning your like you said your colors your body shape your style personality some people learn their bra size some people learn their clothes size some people find out they've been wearing the wrong size. So yeah. it's basically giving them all the style information that they need about themselves. Um, and then they have the tools really to go away, like you said, to do the shopping, to put the outfits together, to detox their wardrobe. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that, that's what it involves really. Mm -hmm. So how come you interested into styling when what age did it start have you had what where your inspirations come from um i would say i've been interested in it for as long as i can remember okay. um as a kid i was really artistic i would put my mum's clothes on my auntie's clothes um i would read magazines back to front over and over draw clothes make my brothers do fashion shows <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't something that I think it wasn't something you think oh that's a career it's just something that you like doing mm -hmm. so it's not something that's really harnessed in you so then at school I didn't necessarily go down that route I mm -hmm. liked PE I liked art but I ended up down the PE route and it's not until later life that it kind of came out of something that could, like, you know, that I wanted to make a career because I paid to have a colour analysis done myself. Um, and then from that, I was like, I'm really interested in this. And then the seed was planted, really, and it went from there. Mm -hmm. So who, like, what was your first, how was it, who was your first customer and what was it like for you? Did you take the person to a shopping? Because when it's your very first customer, they get treated really special, don't they? Yeah, I think my first customer wasn't a paid customer. I think it was a friend. I think I uh -huh. did as many people as I could to get my confidence up and practice. So I did uh -huh. friends, I did family, um, I did even like clients from my previous business when I was a personal trainer. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was mainly my, 
my circles around me at first um mm -hmm. and then then it allowed me to have some before and after pictures to have a little bit of experience so then I could share their results on social media and then start drumming up some business mm -hmm. so would you say the current style you know that all these fashion magazines coming out and the trend some of some uh, style and uh, it just revolves all the time how often people should follow it i understand everyone's got their individual style and personalities going on and there is uh, also upcoming trend and mm -hmm. as a professional what do you think how would people could adapt it um i think personally i think and professionally you shouldn't necessarily follow trends i think your style how you wear clothes and fashion is what reflects you what the, reflects the best of you mm -hmm. um i think once you've got a style code you use the trends that emerge and you'll pick things out of it that are within your style code to update mm -hmm. your style so if there's a color that's on trend or a particular style that comes in and it's in your style code it's something you can introduce in it's a way you can update your style each year um but personally i think it's not about following a trend i don't think a trend should make you say this is who i am right now this is how i dress i think you should do that and then you should use the trends particularly to then express that uh -huh. um rather than just wearing the same as everybody else because it's in the latest fashion magazine yeah so and then because if if someone if some colors on a trend then lots of shops try to adapt it and there are mm -hmm. so many i don't know greens or pale greens or different colors and then if the person's color code is not that and obviously the person could buy different things but what would yes. be your advice in that respect maybe it um, could be like completely different color yeah mm -hmm. i i generally say with colors people will choose out of what's on trend mm -hmm. from their color palette that i've gave them from what the suit mm -hmm. um there are other colors you can wear that are in fashion you could wear it on the bottom if it doesn't necessarily suit you near your face uh -huh. it's really easy to buy your neutrals like if you suit black or you suit grey then it's not going to be too hard to get in the shops the other thing i recommend is is a company called Kettlewell Colors who specifically make clothes that you can shop by your color palette Perfect. so as soon as i give a client their color palette uh -huh. they can be like oh well i love this color from my palette this is my perfect red my perfect green uh -huh. and then they can go and buy it so uh -huh. it's quite an easy way to update your wardrobe with colorful tops and different looks but generally with regards to trends i would just say it's not a rule you don't have to follow it exactly yeah. it's just it's just a guide uh -huh. and it's what you suit um but i would say out of what's on trend if you like it yes mm -hmm. choose the colors that are better for you not mm -hmm. just because it's there um so so okay, i'm just going to put the light on because when yeah, i sure. started i had loads of natural yeah. light and mm -hmm. now it's dark no problem um oh what yeah you got much more light now it's better yeah exactly yes Right. So you, okay, sorry. Yeah. So what were you no, saying? Fine. You, you, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about you being a personal trainer as well. Yes, that yeah. was my previous career because uh -huh. I did um or I did fitness for years really. Mm -hmm. So I was a personal trainer. I had my own gym with my fiance for a lot of years. Okay. Um and then slowly I built this up around it and then I stepped out of the business and then my fiance um took over without me. Mhm. Mm so so you're loving your new career now. Oh yeah. yeah. Now that, now that I do this, I think why didn't I do this before? Why haven't I been doing it all this time? Mhm. Mm But I do think I built up a lot of skills with people from mm -hmm. my previous career. 
Uh Um, And it's still quite connected. It's about helping people feel better about themselves. You know, I used to help people improve their confidence Uh by, you know, losing weight, getting healthier. Um, So this is just in a different way, really, I think. Uh It's something that I am interested in doing and helping people. Mm-hmm. And it's like really girly thing. Would you say like most of your clients are women or is it different? Um, yes, I would say all of my clients are women. Mm-hmm. But then once the women have it done, um, the husbands are like, oh, that's interesting. And they start to see their confidence raise and mm-hmm. their wardrobe. So then... Although I don't market or share the makeovers I do for men, Uh a lot of people's husbands then come through and they'll get a style code. So Uh I have done quite a few guys Uh as well, Um, which which is nice. It's been a bit different. Yeah. So you could bring like couples and like do their style code and they come out like completely different, very confident and they find themselves, their clothes and everything, style is how people express themselves to outside world, isn't it? That's in the reflection yes. of it, theirs, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly that. Um, they say it takes about 10 seconds to make an impression. Um, mm-hmm. First impression, sorry, and generally what you're wearing is a big part of that. And It doesn't mean you have to look fashionable or stylish every day. Like, Uh I don't. Uh I was sitting around in my pyjamas until we were doing this call. Uh Um, And everyone has off days. But, yes, expressing yourself and looking and feeling your best. It's more about your confidence because how how you carry yourself all lies in your confidence and the clothes you wear make you feel... Uh confident make you feel more comfortable make you feel more yourself so mm-hmm. I think it's more about that than just oh I'm wearing a designer label it's more than that mm-hmm. um, when you're talking about the style code and what about the accessories would that be part of it uh, everything so it's mm-hmm. clothes accessories the color of your belts your shoes your makeup colors Mm-hmm. Um, I look at bra styles, like everything, everything is covered basically. So um, I want to make it as easy as possible for people. I don't want them to have to to think too much about it because everyone is really stressed now um, with shopping. I think there's so much, especially with social media, that it's overwhelming mm-hmm. for people. So I just try to make it as simple as possible and give them as much information as they need, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, accessories are in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because there are so many to choose from and the more choice you have, mm-hmm. it's harder to make a decision, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's very overwhelming for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and the style code minimizes that because you can walk around the shops and you can say, no, yes, no, yes, that's mm-hmm. me, that's not me, that's in my style code, that's not or uh-huh. well, there's some shops that you just simply won't even go in because it's not in your style code. It's it's not necessary. Uh-huh. So it just makes life easier. Some people don't even have to go to the shops. They could just simply go straight online, order it. They know uh-huh. exactly what they need. They know where to get it. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah. yeah. For those who don't like shopping anyway. Yeah, there are probably lots of people that don't like go around and shop, especially Christmas time. <laughs> a lot of people don't yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah let's talk about your branding because you okay what, and how, where did the name come from Helmly um, love so it started with um my instagram actually um uh-huh. i set up an instagram just called Helen Lee love so basically whatever i liked at the moment or what I'd Uh bought or I would just share um Uh and yeah it just started from there really um Uh and then it kind of stuck I I tried to think of a more interesting name when I set up at the time but um people were like no no it's great just keep going with it um and then obviously I adapted the style code name for my service and what like what I offer um and Uh then just stuck with it from there really 
Oh, so it was just Sorry. just like that, because I thought it's very, very thought out name because heavenly loves and it mm -hmm. just really makes sense. It does, but mm -hmm. I think sometimes the best ones aren't quite um, as thought out. Like it just happens mm -hmm. naturally, which I think is nice instead of thinking too hard about it. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to come up with the name Style Code because um, I didn't want to be known as just a personal stylist like everybody else. And personally, I thought the way styling was being offered still wasn't quite right or good enough. I knew that by bringing all the elements together, which is what the Style mm -hmm. Code involves, it was much, was much better than just like one doesn't work without the other. Mm -hmm. um, but... But yeah, Helene Loves is just, it genuinely wasn't that um, thought out. It was just my Instagram name that never really left. So, mm -hmm. um, but people seem to like it, so. <laughs> yeah, people love it. People love it. Helene Loves it. Yeah. <laughs> so are you very active on, a, on your Instagram and you would bring what type of trend out coming in and stuff? Um, do you mean active on my Instagram as in what I share or yeah. as in me sitting yeah. scrolling Instagram from no, what I share? Uh, like you share what you love around shops. Is, is that? Yeah, I'm quite, yeah. Yeah, I'm quite active on my Instagram stories. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really active on that. I love just because it's real. It's in the moment. It's what you're up to. Um, mm -hmm. Instagram feeds can become quite curated um, so on my Instagram feed I will share the odd thing like what I'm wearing what I'm up to I'll share clients makeovers I'll share tips um, mm -hmm. but the Insta stories yes I'll share if I'm shopping I'll mm -hmm. share behind the scenes on makeovers um, personally for what I do I think Instagram is the best platform it's more visual, yeah. it's more engaging on the Insta mm -hmm. stories. Um, Facebook is great for your reviews. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people go to that more than your website now. It's almost like your professional business page. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Instagram is definitely where I get the most engagement and I share the most. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to share a bit more on my Instagram. Um, sorry, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think um, doing them both is important. Mm -hmm. Have you got any tips that you could give everybody just generally, even like without saying their style code or color code in a fashion life? Yeah. Um, I would say a couple of things. Um, a, I would look at the pieces in your wardrobe that you feel the best in so if there's something that you always go back to like that feel safe little black dress mm -hmm. there's a pair of trousers that you live in mm -hmm. there's something about that item that works for you and your style code mm -hmm. so if you had more items in your wardrobe like that mm -hmm. you would feel like that all the time you would feel great so I would do that look at what makes you feel bad what makes you feel good what are the mm -hmm. things that you just put on and go oh that works uh -huh. um the other thing i would say is um try buying less and investing more so like the piece i was talking about before like the one that you feel great in like the feel safe black dress uh -huh. um uh -huh. if it's something that's versatile uh -huh. and it works for you then uh -huh. invest in more pieces like that try and reduce the fast fashion reduce your wardrobe being crammed and being overwhelmed by seeing mm -hmm. too much in there yep um last thing i would say um one thing i've been doing lately on my social media on my instagram i went on holiday a couple of weeks ago to spain mm -hmm. and i did a test with my hand luggage case so what i did is for the week i only allowed myself to take a hand luggage case Mm -hmm. And even though I've got a style code curated capsule wardrobe, it really tested me. Um, it made me realize 
that I also still had a few things I needed to get rid of. There was a few things that I was missing. So if you pull something like that out and you're somebody who is looking for the capsule wardrobe because everybody who contacts me is, uh -huh. they want to feel less overwhelmed by the wardrobe. They want to shop less. So uh -huh. pull it out, your hand luggage, and try and pack for a week and see what you can get in there. Um, it was interesting. I noticed when I packed, I was like, I just need tops. So uh -huh. I went straight out and I bought a white top, a navy top, a black top, and a stripy top. And then that was it. it I had a, my wardrobe was finished really. So it's, it's better to look at what you need when you go shopping instead of just going out and just buying things aimlessly that catch your eye and you like. Uh -huh. So yeah. um, I love tasks around that. So, so yeah. Excellent. So that's three, I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder because you said like color coding wise, people got their primary color, and probably it won't be more than two or three. Is that right? No one can have five different colors. What do you think? Because do you mean in, in your a, color palette? Yeah, yeah, color palette. Yeah. So do, do you mean in terms of the colours that we suit or do you mean... The colours that suit. Whenever, for example, if I go to you and then you give me an ad advice based on like the colour palette and then style coding. And then you, there will be like probably maximum three or four colours and then a similar colour. Oh no, there's that. more than that. Is there? Oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So you so wouldn't have, you, everybody... would you have like 10 different colors? Oh, there's more than 10. Oh, so your wardrobe could yeah. be like a rainbow. <laughs> well, <laughs> not necessarily. It could be if yeah. you wanted it to be, but it wouldn't work very well. So yeah. everybody, everybody can almost wear every color but it's the shade the contrast the undertone of the color so there's a uh -huh. blue for everyone there's a green the only color that isn't in some people's palettes is something like orange so the reason i would say you only need about five colors in your wardrobe uh, right. is because you want to try and create a wardrobe that coordinates Mm -hmm. Like the capsule, so mine is black, white, navy, emerald green with mm -hmm. a pop of red and a pop of maybe cobalt blue in there. Mm -hmm. um, so I help people choose probably the five favourites mm -hmm. and the five best out of probably a palette of around 20, 30 colours that are the best colours. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's how we kind of create a capsule. Uh -huh. But no, no, there's there's so there's so many colours you can wear, and I think people um, think that. I think a lot of people think that. I think that they're only going to be a couple of colours that they're going to have a choice of, but there's actually uh -huh. a lot. All right, okay. Have you ever met any customer that loved the colour that absolutely against their their I don't know that doesn't complement their skin colour or. <laughs> Um, every single customer. Really? Every single customer. Uh -huh. Yep. I, I was exactly the same as well. Uh -huh. So majority, okay, maybe eight and nine out of ten people love the colours uh -huh. that are the opposite to their colours. Um, <laughs> because there's a difference between what we're attracted to and what we suit. Uh -huh. um, before I knew my colours, my favourite colours were the complete opposite on the colour spectrum to what I should be wearing. Uh -huh. um, but when I seen the colours on myself, yeah. how they looked, how they made me feel, uh -huh. then I loved them a lot more. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, majority of people are not necessarily attracted to what they suit a couple of people are but it's okay yeah. it's, it's a learning curve yeah so it is not basically overnight thing because what i was no. thinking was go to helen lee 
get my color code and get rid of all my old clothes, bring their brand new wardrobe and just start being different. Or, but it's kind of a well, quite trans transitional, are, isn't it? There are, um, there are like instant results from it. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of instant gratification. You get your colors, you see them on you, you feel great. You can go home and you can be like, all right, I'm throwing this out, throwing that mm -hmm. out. You could go online and buy a couple of things that are in your style code. Mm -hmm. But yes, it is a journey. It it it's evolves over years, really, or a couple of years. Quite interesting, mm -hmm. the first couple of years evolving with your style code. It's definitely, definitely a personal journey. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, it takes time. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Sharon, for sharing all of this interesting fashion stuff, style coding and everything. So I really would like to know about you. So what do you do on your spare time and how do you spend your free time? Lots of um, I do go to CrossFit. Uh, mm -hmm. I love CrossFit. Um, mm -hmm. I train with Dave, my fiance as well at his gym. Mm -hmm. um, I love Netflix in my pajamas, mm -hmm. eating fish and chips. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, me and Dave are always in Starbucks. Um, we love going to coffee shops. That's our thing. Um, I do like a little bit of shopping as well, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say it, it's it's a hobby. But I do mm -hmm. like a browse and going for a coffee and some food. But that's your job, isn't it? Because you need yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I do shop since, uh -huh. since I do it as a job. Uh -huh. I actually do shop less for myself. Uh -huh. You know, on a weekend, you might be like, oh, let's pop to the Metro Centre. And I probably don't do that as much now because, yeah, I'll do it for work uh -huh. um but i would say probably mainly fitness food and um yeah and chill and watch netflix or um or me and my partner we like to travel you know i'll go away or uh -huh. the odd weekend or um yeah no, doesn't good. really sound that interesting does it <laughs> no because it's, it's different because i don't know you might go to choir or maybe do some creative writing course People just don't know because we just know you as a style coach. Yeah. And that's why I was interested in it. So um, are you into reading and what kind of book? Yeah. I'll... Do you read? And... Um, I love I love reading about like fashion history. So I've got a lot of books on the history of brands. Mm -hmm. Like I've got one I've been reading on Manolo Blahnik, the shoe designer. Mm -hmm. I love um I love a lot of like mindset books you know around mm -hmm. opening up how we think our habits and mm -hmm. behaviors so I do read a little bit about that as well I love reading magazines my favorite thing to do is get a magazine a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and some like dark chocolate or something and I just mm -hmm. love reading bold things like that it's I love it yeah mm -hmm. uh, Pinterest I'm always being creative on Pinterest um uh -huh. and I don't really meet, read many fictional books. It's mainly mm -hmm. um, quite, yeah, work-related um, or magazines. Right. Yeah, very interesting. And then if you think that, if you, like, as a style coach, who do you follow? As a fashion designer, maybe? Who who do you follow? Who do I follow? Mm -hmm. Who's your like fashion I, icon? I love. Oh, all uh, right, and uh, like inspiration. Yeah, yeah, inspiration. I love Victoria Beckham. Mm -hmm. Um, I love Victoria Beckham. I love, um, her style. I love her brand. I love what she's achieved. So mm -hmm. I do. I do follow her. I've got a lot of admiration for Charlotte Tilbury. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you've heard of her. She, the, she has a makeup company I love how she has changed the makeup industry um, mm -hmm. my favourite fashion blogger is somebody called Mary Orton she's from New York uh -huh. but she's got a very classic 
British style, so I would say if I'm on Instagram, that's who I would look at as well. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah. Oh, interesting because it's it's a completely different industry and then there are lots of people are in it and it's quite, it's just very competitive as well, isn't it? And then everybody yeah, wants very. to dress especially like with instagram mm-hmm. yeah i think bloggers are becoming a little bit more of the influencers than celebrities now and i think instagram mm-hmm. is just saturated with so many different people you could get fashion inspiration from different bloggers mm-hmm. um i kind of started off blogging a little bit that way but i didn't want to just be like everybody else um Mm -hmm. I think you can get a lot of inspiration from celebrities or fashion bloggers but sometimes you're like well it looks good on them but will it look good on me um so that's where I wanted to use my influence to share the style code and do something a little bit different um Mm -hmm. and then it obviously evolved into trading as a stylist as well but yeah I would say now more than ever with Instagram fashion it's becoming like huge and full of celebrities and bloggers who are Mm -hmm. like influencing people in that way. Mm -hmm. Have you got any aspiration to make your own designs and in a clothing range or something like that? Um, I would say I would never say never. Mm -hmm. I would love to one day maybe provide what the industry isn't providing um i'm not saying it's a definite Mm -hmm, but yeah it's something that i would never say is never Mm -hmm. um when i first started doing this and when i was even a child that's the thing that i used to do i used to draw clothes and design them and Mm -hmm. um, make my own little catalogs Mm -hmm. and things like that um but at the moment, I'm using what's out there mm-hmm. and pulling it together in one place with the style code to try and help people shop in a better way. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm maybe I'm very interested in clothes, and I am going to learn how to make clothes this year, mm-hmm. mainly for myself, like as a hobby. I'm going to take up sewing lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You never know, it could be the start of something. Exactly. Because my, my daughter, she watched some YouTube videos and they just buy very simple white T-shirt and then just cut through and then do a little bit and box yeah. and make mm-hmm. it just so fashionable. Yeah. And I remember... So talking, interesting, yeah. Yeah, I remember talking to you because you buy clothes and then you take to your... What is it like? Alterations, you, alterations lady, yeah. lady, and then make it a bit different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I'll take it to get a better fit. Mm-hmm. Like I'll I'll find a garment, but it's quite hard to get really good fit and clothes these days. I mean, I love places like recent Caramillan for more like tailoring and fit, but mm-hmm. generally. I'm back and forth to my alterations lady, and I'm like, it fits my legs, but I need a bit taken in on my waist. Mm-hmm. And, I need the leg length taken up or down. So, um, yes, I'll, I'm all about the fit. Mm. And I teach people a lot about the fit is overlooked so much. Um, so I think everyone needs to know a good alterations lady. Yeah, because unless it's tailor-made, yeah. all the shops you. just do the standard. Maybe like pieces yeah. tall yeah. and yeah, standard. A lot of shops don't even do that. A lot of shops don't even do petite or Mm -hmm. average at all. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you're right. Um, And everybody doesn't just fit into one size. Mm -hmm. Um, So the more, I think I love brands where you can customize the shopping experience. Mm -hmm. I love it with color options, average, petite, or tall. Um, And yeah, I love being, I love tailored clothes. Um, So. It would be nice to know how to do that myself because I'm always there. I'm always getting things titivated or changed or Mm -hmm. taken in and out. So um, it'll save me a lot of time running back and forwards when I can do it myself. Yeah. So when you said your 
your fiance, your wedding's coming. You got your wedding dress yet? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. um, I got my dress in January, uh -huh. um, which was a really nice experience. I think even when you're trained like I am and you know uh -huh. what to suit, um, your wedding dress is such a different purchase. Uh -huh. um, but it was a really, really nice experience. And I, I love it. I've definitely found the one. Um, but it's not what I expected. Mm -hmm. Sounds cliche because everybody says that, but it's really not what I expected. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Um, yeah. But when I do somebody's style code, if mm -hmm. they've been married, I always ask to see their wedding picture because their wedding dress will always reveal body shape before I even analyse them. Mm-hmm. Which is really interesting because when you shop for your dress, you shop like so intensely for it. It's like it's got to be the right colour, it's got to be the right cut, shape, the material. We uh -huh. only ever shop like that for our wedding dress, like not for any of the clothes in life. So not many uh -huh. people get their wedding dress wrong. Um, uh -huh. So it's really interesting to look at. So that's a tip for people watching actually. Go and look at your wedding dress. It'll say a lot about your style because <laughs> <laughs> that's like a custom made the choice through you exactly yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah it's literally made for you yeah um mm -hmm. and people always say like oh I felt the best I've ever felt I felt amazing on my wedding day and I can't wait to feel like that as well mm -hmm. and I, I do feel amazing in the dress but I do think you shouldn't only feel like that on one day. You should feel you that sh you every should day. Feel like that as much as you can. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Or at least as much as you can. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. A, yeah. I feel a little bit of that day every day. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. So, so, so that's yeah. where the style coding come from. So, like, yes. make you feel yeah. um, that amazing every day. Oh yeah. Well. But yeah, definitely more amazing than uh -huh. a lot of people are walking around feeling uh -huh. before they come to me anyway. Um, That's fantastic. Just, just it came to my mind. You know that that film called Devil Wears Prada. Yes. Yeah, the girls they are really into fashion, aren't they? They're just trying to. They mm -hmm. want like every new item on trend. So, because you work with lots of people, is there like, like maybe 10% or 5% or 1% of people are like that? How would you describe them when they come to you? What, like into high fashion? Not high fashion. They want to be on a trend. Um, or they want to be themselves get... more. I do I do get some people who are really into fashion, but I would generally say people like that don't mm -hmm. come to me. Mm -hmm. They're not interested in style. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between style and fashion. Um, people who come to me, actually quite a lot of them aren't really even into reading fashion magazines. Mm -hmm. um, they're just interested in knowing what they suit. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be on trend. They don't want to wear high fashion. They want to make shopping and getting dressed every day less stressful than it is right now for them mm -hmm. and feel more confident. Um, so I, I would say I don't really attract that kind of person. Mm -hmm. They don't need me. If they're just interested in what's in fashion, they'll just open a magazine and see it and go and buy it. Mm -hmm. So... I don't really meet people like that, to be honest. So, right. um, yeah, because it's a, but eventually, you will. Sorry, what were you going to say? Eventually, yeah. eventually they'll get. Yeah, <laughs> I might eventually. Yeah, uh -huh. and sometimes I might get sick of having a wardrobe just full of fashion, and then one day I might think, do you know what? I want uh -huh. to know what suits me. So, um, so yeah, it's not really my client. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what do you think that people must have? 
Programming. Must have. Uh -huh. Like everyone should um, have like at least one or two of those. Like that suits um, any color palette and uh, maybe style code. Oh, you mean like so something something that would suit everybody? Yeah, that should have everyone should um, have. Mm -hmm. I would say a staple in every wardrobe that can work. In t Again, it comes in different styles, but I think a tee, a simple T-shirt, uh -huh. you can put in trousers, you could put in jeans and dress uh -huh. up and down. I think every wardrobe needs a little black dress. I know it sounds really cliche, but something yeah. you can dress up and down. Uh -huh. Personally, at the moment, I love a pair of black wide leg trousers. I just think they are the new wardrobe staple and I haven't met a body shape who can't make them work right now. Uh -huh. It depends how wide and maybe the waistline and the material, but personally, I think everybody needs a pair of black high-waisted wide leg trousers. Um, you can just dress them up and down. I wear mine with dressy trainers and a T-shirt. I wear them with uh -huh. heels and a blouse. I wore them on a night out with a camisole. Um, that's what I think everybody needs or should have, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's a great tip, actually. That wasn't even come across as a tip, but that's like everyone really should know. Yeah. And yeah. if you think the ac about the accessories, what bit of accessories, like which would you say the most important? Not everybody accessorizes or has to. Uh -huh. uh, some styles aren't into accessorizing. Um, I think the best accessory is your handbag, um, right. personally. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think, I think style is very easily elevated or very easily dressed down with a matter of the switch of the shoes and the handbag. Uh -huh. Um, if you're not into accessories, you can put like sunglasses on your head, you can wear a scarf in the winter, mm -hmm. have a nice watch, but I don't think there's one single piece of jewellery that everybody would suit or should have. I think the biggest thing I think is your handbag. Um, that's the best accessory. I'm definitely a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good because I've I loved that you sent me a few photos and I loved your gloves and the color. Oh, it's yes. just amazing. It just like shows the, the bright pink leather yeah. gloves. I, I wouldn't it's yeah. not really pink, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's like a fuchsia pink. Yeah. It, that was like just, a purpley bright yeah, fuchsia purpley pink. Bright, yeah. yeah. And I just loved it, and I was like, oh, wow, that's really stand oh, out. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect example of someone who doesn't wear a lot of accessories. Mm -hmm. I only wear, like, a pair of studs, but I like to add a pop from my gloves or my scarf or my leopard print handbag. I think I like to do it with, like, one pop of accessory, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um. Those are like kind of a timeless accessories, isn't it? Yeah. They're like a leopard print that's yes. been in fashion like forever. Exactly. And I don't think they will come out it... anytime. No, mm -hmm. I think it, it comes in and out in certain garments each season. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be big in shoes or dresses. But I think for the last year, two years, it's just been massive every season and it still is. There's a bit of snake print at the moment as well, but I love a leopard print. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, it's timeless. Done in the right way anyway, especially in accessories or shoes. Mm -hmm. um, I love a pop of leopard, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, Helen Lee, what's the, 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 this is going to be my last question. What's the thing that people don't know about you? Ooh, good question. Okay, something funny or something serious? Oh, I don't know. Whatever you come up. 
<laughs> you choose. Um, because people's got okay, so much some... talents and things going on behind, but we just know them what they want us to know. Hmm. So, what's your um? Something funny. Well, kind of funny. Um, people always laugh when I tell them. Um, I've got, I've got like on my other hand, which is holding the phone. I've got half a finger, and people always are like, "No way! I've never even noticed." But when I was about two year old, um, I had a pet rabbit, and it bit my finger off. And people always say, "No, like you're lying. You've just made that story up to shock everyone, or it's a party story." Um, and kids always used to like oh be coming God. about it at school, but yes. So when, really, so when I tell people that, and then when I show them, they're like, "Oh my God, I didn't even notice until you'd said." But yeah, so uh -huh. that's that's like my my party story. <laughs> um, so watch out for those rabbits. Um, <laughs> something else, something a bit more serious. Um, what people don't know about me um that's a really hard question I don't know I'm trying to think um I'm from Newcastle I'm not from Durham but I think I said that at the beginning um yeah I don't know I'm really sorry I can't think year. of anything yeah <laughs> I'm getting married that's next absolutely year. Fine. yeah that's um rabbit stories just got me That's just, uh, Honestly, that's probably the most out there thing I could tell you that people don't mm -hmm. know about me. My friends and family do, but yeah, and it makes people it makes people laugh or they're shocked. But I don't know. I I don't really know I what to you. say. <laughs> yeah, because when you think the <laughs> rabbit, it's just like the, that little furry animal. that's supposed to be. I know. The cutest, kindest, I guess, but no. <laughs> I know. If you say mm -hmm. dog, but I was only, I was only two, so yeah. I just had like little fingers. Mm. Um, but luckily, mm -hmm. it wasn't my wedding finger. Aww. It was a finger on the other hand. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, but wow. um, yeah. So that's probably the most like obscure thing about me that someone wouldn't know unless I told them. Oh. I don't really have anything at, that I can think of. Uh -huh. off the top of my head uh -huh. um, that you wouldn't know other than uh -huh. it probably would come to me after the call but yeah. no I'm good sure, question I'm sure though <laughs> yeah so what's the big ambition what's the big dream I think you're frozen is it like your battery's gone now Hello? <laughs> right, okay. I think we're going to finish quite soon. And thank you very much all for tuning in. And we'll see you next Wednesday. It's going to be Kul Mahay, the founder of Ignite your inner potential, and the immersion coach. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.